and ramen. Who's hungry? Itadakimasu! Welcome to Fan Ramen. The official podcast of Black Ramen. We're a band who writes epic music for film and games. And we're here to read your fan fiction. I'm Lindy. Konnichiwa! I'm Ralph Wasabi. Behind the board is our awesome sound guy. And sushi chef, the, the wizard, wizard Kevin. Kevin. Just Our Luck is a supernatural fan fiction from All Shall Fade 777. You can find them at fanfiction.net, so be sure to give this story a follow. Drop it. The gun clicked in metallic threat as the man cocked the weapon. Drop it right now, or I swear, Winchester, I'll blow his brains out. Not that they weren't already leaking out of the back of his head. The sight of the blood oozing down Sam's neck made Dean's blood run cold with fear. I ain't gonna ask again, the man said. Drop it. Sam practically hung in the man's grip. He was upright only by some miracle, conscious only by some fluke. His eyes, shadowed by blood-streaked bangs and sagging eyelids, focused sluggishly on Dean. I'm right here, man. Dean desperately tried to tell him. I gotcha. I'm not gonna let him do it. There was a small squelch as the man pushed the gun barrel against Sam's skull. Sam let out a moan, and his eyes rolled back into his head. His legs crumpled, body going limp in the man's arms. No! Dean yelled. His finger tightened reflexively on the trigger. Anyone hurts Sammy, they die. But he didn't shoot. He couldn't, because the man just hoisted Sam back up and kept right on using him to shield himself. Now look what you made me do. He drawled indifferently. You gonna make me pull the trigger too, huh? What do you say, Winchester? Feel like mopping up little bro's gray matter? Dean's teeth were close to cracking. His jaw was clenched so hard. He pinned the man with his deadliest stare. But they both knew there was nothing Dean could do. I thought not. A smug, lazy grin. Now, you know what I want. Put the gun down, Sammy here lives, and you and I can talk nice and civil. In his mind, Dean had already crossed the space between them and killed the man a thousand times over, strangled him, pounded his head against the pavement, beaten him bloody. But Dean knew he couldn't do it. All he could see was his little brother slumping, pale, with a gun to his head. He had no choice. Dean's muscles vibrated with tension and protest, but he slowly lowered his weapon. A look of triumph crossed the man's face. Good. You made the right decision here, Winchester. Dean's reply was a growl. Just give me my brother back, you son of a... Oh, you'll get him back, all right. I promise you. The man gave a twisted grin. Just not quite yet. Dean scowled. What the hell are you... Footsteps scuffled behind him. And before he could even begin to turn, he felt the winter-cold prick of a needle entering his neck, the burning spike of something as it slipped into his veins. His vision immediately went dark. What? What did you... The question wouldn't form. Dean's legs gave out. His head hit the ground. And the next and last thing he was aware of was the sickening thump of his brother's body being dumped beside him. And then there was nothing but darkness. Alone is a full metal alchemist fan fiction from The Purple Writer 333. You can find them at fanfiction.net, so be sure to give this story a follow. I don't think you're taking this seriously, Full Metal. Colonel Roy Mustang pressed his hands down against his desk, not breaking eye contact with the moody teen in front of him. This man is taking and torturing state alchemists. It's no laughing matter. Ed made an exaggerated motion of rolling his eyes. Yeah, yeah, thanks. I get it, but I'll be fine. We call him the Slicer. Do you want to know why? Mustang didn't wait for Ed to answer. He takes off parts of their bodies, Ed. Their limbs. His somber expression deepened. 
picking up your girlfriend from the train station right now isn't the wisest idea. I could send Lieutenant Hawkeye She's not my girlfriend and she never has been! You don't know anything, you girlfriendless bastard! Brother, calm down, Al chided from beside him. Just listen to what Colonel Mustang has to say. This guy does sound pretty dangerous and I don't think you should go alone. I don't care what he thinks, Ed said vehemently, giving Mustang a black look as he leaned back into his chair sulkily. I can take care of myself just fine. You're still a kid. I'm not a kid, and I don't have to do what you say, you spineless... All right! Mustang pulled his hands up in surrender. I get it, Full Metal, but you should still take Al, at least. A long minute passed where nothing was said. Finally, Ed leaned forward and nodded grudgingly. Fine. Good. Now you're free to go. Just stay sharp out there, Ed. Mustang pursed his lips. Can't risk losing any more men than we already have. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Ed replied, but it was clear he was only half listening by now. He pushed himself up from his seat, suddenly filled with a new energy. Come on, Al. Let's go meet Winry before her train arrives. I hope we're not late, Al added, standing up after Ed. I know I don't have a body anymore, but I can still almost imagine the pain when she hits me with her wrench. <laughs> You're telling me. Ed groaned, rubbing the back of his head as if it was still throbbing as he opened the door. I wouldn't be surprised if she gave me a concussion the last time we met up with her. Agreed, brother. Agreed. Al, you can go up ahead. I'll be right there. I just want to finish getting these apples for Winry before we meet her, but I don't want to slow you down. Maybe she'll make me one of her pies later. Al turned his head to look over his shoulder, now concerned as he cocked his head. Are you sure that's, that's a, a good, good decision, decision, Ed? You know what Colonel Mustang told you. You shouldn't go off alone. Al, I'll be just fine. Just go already. Ed retorted with an additional roll of his eyes. You worry too much. Al shuffled on his feet uncomfortably before he finally shrugged his shoulders. All right, but just be quick, okay? Winry will kill us both if you're late. Don't remind me. But don't worry, I'll be there. And, and you're sure you'll be fine? Al? There is a criminal kidnapping and torturing state alchemist right now, you know? Well, I only have one more arm to lose, and I really don't think he'd want it. Ed stared at Al. Come on, go already. At least Winry will have one of us on time. Reminding himself of Winry's angry wrench throwing, Al's body shuddered. In seconds, he had turned around and ran off, his metal body clanking noisily and earning himself a few stares. Seconds later... Ed was alone. It didn't really bother him that he hadn't brought any weapons, even though he could be attacked at any moment. It was midday, he was surrounded by people, and on top of that, he was Edward Elric, the famed full metal alchemist. According to the world, he could take on anything. But still, the fact lingered in his mind that several other powerful state alchemists had been attacked and tortured before him. Some had died. And those alchemists were older and much more experienced than he was. Oh, shut up. Ed muttered to himself. It wasn't like he could do anything about it anyways. Paying for the rest of the apples he'd gathered, he was on his way. As he walked, an almost dark presence settled over him. It reminded him of a bad omen or perhaps a premonition of sorts. Suddenly, he wished Al had stayed behind with him, but he quickly shook that thought away. I can defend myself just fine, he said to himself. I don't need a ten-foot piece of armor to protect me. He had hardly taken another step before someone grabbed him and pulled him into a nearby alleyway. Widely caught off guard, Ed could only let himself be dragged painfully forward before being slammed against the brick wall. Wincing as his head collided with the stone, Ed was briefly blinded from seeing his attacker. So, you're the famous full metal alchemist, huh? A man's voice suddenly asked him. Ed gritted his teeth together, peering up and trying to see the man's face from under his mask. Who wants to know? Are you that guy who's been taking other state alchemists? The other man laughed, a cool, malicious sound. <laughs> you'll find out soon enough. And you'll find out right now that I'm not going anywhere with the likes of a bastard like you! Clapping his hands together and taking a moment to concentrate, Ed prepared to let loose his alchemy to assist him in getting away. But barely another moment passed before something was smashed down over his head and the world began to spin around him. 
through the blurry red haze, Ed caught a glimpse of a yellow smile and a large metal rod above him. Can't have you using that handy alchemy of yours now, can we? No, Ed whispered, but suddenly his mouth was filled with a sticky syrup, and it became hard to speak. I I can't. Sweet dreams, alchemist. The world faded into a bleak black color, and Ed felt his legs buckling underneath him. After that, the only thing he sensed was quiet, fear, and pain. It's time for a little dessert. We're going to drizzle some drabble on you. If you don't know what drabble is, it's mochi-sized stories. What do you say? Today, we've got a Doctor Who drabble Who? from Badly Knitted on fanfiction.net. Let me spell that for you. B-A-D-L-Y dash K-N-I-T-T-E-D. I thought it was W-H-O. They've got over <laughs> 40 drabble stories, so it's definitely worth checking out and following on fanfiction.net. It's the Time Lord way of cheating death, but though it means he continues living, it's not without drawbacks, nor is it painless. It's like an all-consuming fire, searing through every cell of his body, burning away his old self, creating him anew. Golden flames race along his nerves, shimmer across his skin, forming his body into a new shape, no longer suffering the damage that was killing his old one. When it fades away, he's unrecognizable, even to himself, and must embark on a voyage of rediscovery to learn who he's become. He doesn't always like the answer. The doctor loves jokes. There's no better tool for annoying his enemies than humor, preferably at their expense. While they try to be their best evil selves, he cracks jokes, taunts them, makes them react impulsively, even irrationally. When people of any species get angry, they make mistakes. It's a universal constant. Besides, jokes are funny. And what's life without a bit of fun? Dead boring, that's what. Laughter breeds hope, and when there's hope, anything is possible. That's why the doctor always wins. Not because he's smarter, although he usually is, but because he knows which buttons to push. It's been a rough few weeks. With Amy and Rory staying on Earth, the Doctor's currently without companions. And after the battering she's taken, the TARDIS needs repairs. The planet's small, hardly more than a moon dotted with craters, but it provides a solid surface to land on, and the natives are currently friendly, rather pink and looking remarkably knitted. Well, he's seen stranger creatures, and he's sure he probably looks just as odd to them. Thank you, he smiles at the dragon, accepting green soup, and returns to his conversation with the natives. Good thing he can whistle. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the wonderful fan fiction. Send your submissions and or questions to fanramenpodcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is Lindy. This is Ralph. And we'll see you later. This podcast produced by Lindy Day and Ralph Avalon. Sound design and engineering by Kevin Villagestone. Music by Black Ramen. Recorded and mixed in the Black Ramen Studios.